Verse 22, Mark 14, 22. While they were eating, he did something that by now the hearer has heard twice. He took the bread and blessed the bread and broke the bread and gave the bread and explained and said, this is my body. Isn't, isn't it amazing? Because we got all the narratives saying there's no bread for this side, there's no bread for that side. And then Jesus says, do you know what the bread is? It's me. And he does the four verbs that we had the whole time long. And he took the bread and he blessed the bread and he broke the bread. And he gave them the bread and said, this is my body that is broken It's amazing. And the disciples were, are you serious? It's for all? You know, we have struggled with this for such a long time. Many of your kids are not in church. Because we told them they did not qualify. We told them they were on the other side. And if they were this or they wore that, they couldn't come in. We told them that they were way far out there. That unless they did everything like we did it. They couldn't come in. There's kids out there that got pregnant when they were teenagers. That we didn't know how to embrace. Some of your kids need a phone call right now. Or you say, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that I thought my God was so little. The fit in a little box. But you're included. And I'm so sorry that for so many years. I didn't know how to tell you. That God's love is that great. And yes. I would like all your kids. To be sitting here. With us today. But if they're worshiping in a different Christian church. And they're getting Jesus. Praise the Lord. Because there's enough bread. Or this side and the other side. And they're not even on the other side. They're on our side. And there's people on the other side. That still need to know that even they are included. You know, one time, I don't know how many of you know the, the president of the North American Division. He's an amazing man, Dan Jackson. He's about to retire. But I had the incredible blessing of serving under him all this time. And when he was a pastor one time, there was a young adult in outside the church. And he went to invite him in. And this man said, this young man said, I cannot go in. I smell, you know, I've been smoking. And Dan said to him, if every one of our sins smelled, this would be a very smelly place. So please come in and join us. Can you imagine what church would be? What our mission would be? If at some point we became convinced that there's enough bread for this side and the other side. For men and for women. <laughs> can you imagine that women can preach the gospel too? Can you imagine what it would be if we tell the young people that they're not just the future of our church, but that they're the present. What would it look like if all black and white and young and old and men and women felt that there was enough bread for them? And there is. And Jesus said, it is my broken body and it's enough for everybody. And when our denomination started, we were told don't ever finish a sermon without telling people about Jesus. And I'm going to put this quote from Ellen White on the screen for you. Because sometimes we forget that this was the beginning of our denomination. It said this. The sacrifice of Christ as an atonement for sin is the definite article, the great truth around which all other truths cluster. In order to be rightly understood and appreciated, every truth in the word of God from what? Genesis 2, 
Revelation must be studied in the light that comes from the cross of Calvary. And it continues. I present before you the great grand monument of mercy and regeneration, salvation and redemption. The son of God uplifted on the cross. Amen. This is to be the foundation of every discourse given by our ministers. Gospel workers, page 315, and in Spanish, 